All right, today is the day. I'm trying to wrap up a few projects before the beginning of the year when we're gonna kind of do some shifting. But today we're gonna look at two different things. One is kind of a catch up because a lot of things that I have done videos for, I only did one side of the vehicle and I still need to complete the other side. And one of those is the intake duct on the side of the car on the passenger side. We are gonna do that one today. And we are gonna do a third time's a charm. I have already put the steering rack in two different times. But due to popular demand, I have made some adjustments in the steering rack again and moved it to its final location. I hope it's the final location because third time is plenty of times to move that thing. Anyway, let's go see that done. Now there's a little bit of difference on this side of the car. We've got a fuel filler that's gonna go in here. So I've got myself a little stainless steel fueler cap that's gonna go in through this hole that I need to cut. My hole saw was just fractionally too small, so take a file, rat tail file, and uh, enlarge it just fractionally to get that thing to fit in here. Now that it fits through there, I've also got to mark the edge because the flange on that thing is just also fractionally a little too big. Probably a little less than an eighth of an inch, grind that out. Now it all fits beautifully. And now we're going to jump over to uh, cutting ourselves a piece of core foam. We're going to use this piece of core foam to support all of our lamination as we install it underneath that fuel filler and create our duct. This foam core is gonna make it so that I can be able to flip this whole thing over and be able to handle it while I'm uh, installing it. So the part of the installation we're talking about here is the lamination and that is gonna be three layers of this nine ounce cloth. And I'm gonna saturate it with some epoxy resin. I'm just gonna brush it in and then use a squeegee to consolidate it. Now I've had someone here that, people on here that have uh, questioned my not using a roller often, but a squeegee is also a great tool for consolidating and pressing out the air, getting the resin into all the spaces. And you just work the resin around where you've got more resin, you push it into the dry side. I've got a few spots that are still dry, even not enough resin, add some resin squeegee it out, get it to where our ratio is just about perfect. And then we're going to add that core foam onto the top here. But the idea here is this thing's all built on a piece of plastic. Now I can flip it over, peel the plastic off, come over and I can keep my hand on the dry foam on the bottom and push it into place. I've also cut some little prop rods, little pieces of sticks that are going to go up against some part of the body or the frame, push against the foam core and hold that thing in place while I work it. Now that glass cloth is hanging off about two inches on each of the sides here. Just gonna take a brush with some resin and kind of push that onto the body panel itself to kind of bond this thing from the underside. But that's not gonna be enough. We're gonna also add some to the top. So we've got this piece of core foam with some fiberglass on the top of it. That's laminated to the body. Now we're gonna switch over and go to the top and add some little pieces of cloth into the corners to Kind of make, I guess might you say a Y joint. Some fiberglass lapping on the bottom, some lapping on the top. Got a little bit of a droop in one stick there, so add a little chunk to push it up, keep it nice and tight. Add some resin in there so that when I put my cloth on, I don't have to try to push it through. Then I'm gonna take some, like I said, little strips of cloth, add them into the corners. And then I'll just uh, saturate them with resin, keep working those around. I say now we've got joints for the fiberglass going to the bottom and the top. Of course, uh, once this thing's all cured and hardened, I will be flipping this tub over and doing some triple laminations on the bottom. But for now, we're working on the top side. There's some areas of this fiberglass from the original tub that came out of the mold that are beveled off and I'm going to put some fiberglass across those bevels to kind of bond that piece into place. And in the end, this will be some more filling and fairing this thing to make it smooth transition of the air going through into this duct. Just a matter of working resin in there, lapping layers back and forth. Got about three layers into part of this thing, and that should be enough to make it nice and rigid. Like I say, once it's rigid, we can go back and really work this thing. Next day, 
time to take this thing apart. Added a clamp there. You can see to kind of pull that piece up in there tight against that one corner. Take our little prop rods out. And this thing's holding in place beautifully with the epoxy. Nice and rigid. Now we're gonna jump over to our steering rack. Now a lot of people have complained and my uh, illustration in the, a previous video kind of exaggerated this thing, but basically my pivot point was about an inch and a half off. It's gonna give me some bump steer. People were worried about that but it was a kind of a necessity I thought at the time. But after rethinking it, I've been able to move it to the bottom. And now, as you can see from the lower pickup points, gonna be just about perfect. You can see my tie rods actually laying down a little bit low and it'll come up a little bit higher to meet that steering rack and should be just about perfect now. Gonna have to do some adjustments for my steering column, but I think everything is gonna work great with this new position. Everybody should be happy. So my steering rack needs to be centered on here. I'm going to take some measurements, mark center on this tube that's going to support it. Center on my steering rack, position it. Now one of the holes in the steering rack is going to go dead center through this bottom tube. Another hole is a little bit longer flange, so it's about three eighths off center. And I'm going to have to uh, put some tubing through this bottom tube. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second here. But instead of uh, collapsing this tube or when you put some torque on those bolts to hold the steering rack on, crushing the tube or losing some strength in there, I'm going to drill them out. So pilot hole, a step drill, drill them out until this piece of tubing I keep trying will fit through the tube. And then I will go in and weld that thing in place and that will create the hole for the bolt to go through. Like I said, just to keep it, prevent it from uh, crushing that bottom tube and losing some strength in there. Of course, grind things off, clean it all up. This thing's got a little bit of a rusting buildup, oxidization, so clean it up so I get some good welds. And of course, the piece of tubing I'm gonna weld through these holes has also been painted before, so grind it off, clean it up. Now I'm over at the workbench, gonna weld these little tubes through the holes. Gotta shim it up till it's uh, protruding just perfectly. And we'll go ahead and weld them up. Now that I have these uh, tubes all welded into place, I'm going to take it for a trial fit. I got some bolts a little bit tight on the bolt, so uh, tap them through. And now we have to make something for our, our rear holes, four holes on the steering rack. So I've created these little brackets. They're going to go between the two bottom tubes of the subframe. I slide them in. I guess it looks like I gotta do some more grinding to clean up for welding spots. Slide the brackets in so they line up with the holes of the steering rack. And now that I've got those in place, I'll go ahead and tack them. Kind of a trick reaching through all this tubing to get to those things. Pull the bolts, pull the steering rack out of the way, and now I can get it finished weld. And after this thing's welded, I can now move it back to the floor and uh, finish drilling the holes for the holes that we just created for our uh, rear mounts on the steering rack here. Drill them out till my bolt fits. Then let's throw the steering rack back on to check all four holes. Still tight on the front ones. Grab me one more bolt. Fits there, fits there. And there it is. Center nicely, waiting for some tie rod ends to go on those things. There you go, a couple of short projects today, doing some catch up, like I said, trying to wrap up a few things before the end of the year so that we can start on some new and exciting fresh stuff. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so if you like the content here, seeing this project getting built. I'll also put a link up here to some videos that are showing the things that we just did today but in previous versions, and you go back and catch those as well. Anyway, thanks for coming by. Come back, see us again.